this video, we will be taking a closer look at stock-based compensation. Numerous companies, especially those in growth mode, report adjusted EBITDA. One of the largest components of adjusted EBITDA is stock-based compensation. For growing companies to attract highly skilled employees, they can do it in two major ways, with high salaries and stock options. Paying employees in stock options allows a company to use less cash but also increase employee alignment. These employees are incentivized to grow the company. Gap accounting requires that we subtract stock-based compensation from EBIT, or operating income. However, since many growth companies don't have a lot of EBIT, stock-based compensation will make this number negative. Therefore, many companies report adjusted EBITDA, which adds back stock-based compensation amongst many other items, and it makes the companies look more profitable. Here is an example of an adjusted EBITDA calculation from Lyft's earnings report. You can see at the top there under net loss, Lyft doesn't make an after-tax profit. Therefore, they add back many different items, including stock-based compensation, which you can see under the three months ended in 2022 was $153.7 million. Adding back these items will get Lyft to a positive adjusted EBITDA margin at the bottom there of $54.8 million. One thing to note is that stock-based compensation is the largest addback here in adjusted EBITDA. Take a look here at Coinbase's adjusted EBITDA calculation, and you will notice two very stark things. First, the net income line at the top is now negative as of the first quarter of 2022. Second, if you follow the stock-based compensation line from $104 million in the first quarter of 2021, it is now tripled to $350 million in the first quarter of 2022. Now, some companies that are close to their IPOs will have a bunch of stock-based compensation, but it looks like this might be permanent for Coinbase. They use stock-based compensation to attract highly skilled employees and keep them happy. You will notice that the adjusted EBITDA at the bottom has gone from over a billion dollars every quarter down to just 20 million or 19.6 in Q1 of 2022. When stock-based compensation is such a large percentage of your adjusted EBITDA, a few problems can result, especially when your stock price starts declining. Companies that are diluting their stock over 3% per year are in the danger zone. They have two tough choices to make. First, they can pay their employees more in cash. This will decrease the cash on their balance sheet and also further decrease their profitability. Second, they could reduce the amount of stock-based compensation. This, however, would probably cause them to lose talent as highly skilled employees want to be compensated for their work. Either way, when stock-based compensation is such a large percentage of your adjusted EBITDA, you are playing a dangerous game as a company. You are going to either have to dilute shareholders materially or risk losing talent. Neither one of these is good, and when your stock price is going down, you are certainly backed into a corner. High growth companies like Lyft, Coinbase, Robinhood, and Peloton have had significant declines in their stock price this year. This is like your currency going down. You can afford less goods and services when your stock price is down. How these companies grow going forward without a highly priced stock will be difficult. This is one of the reasons why you should pay attention to stock-based compensation as a percentage of EBITDA, because companies can get stuck in this SBC trap. Thanks for watching. For more information or to download a prospectus, please see frankfunds.com.